Hello and welcome. This video is a start to finish install of a Tesla wall connector version 3. I've also installed a NEMA 1450 in parallel, allowing different types of vehicles to charge. Now, playing with electricity can be very dangerous if you're not skilled. This video is not for the DIYer, it's not for the home installer. In fact, it shouldn't be attempted at all unless you're an electrician. If you show this to your electrician, he'll get some ideas what I did. But I'm here to tell you that electricity is nothing to play with. So let's get to this video. Grab yourself a drink and a snack. It's going to be a long one, but I guarantee you it'll be informative. This cute little place right here is about to get a Tesla wall connector and a 1450 50 amp plug installed. Anytime you have a high current type of load like a car charger, you want to locate the Tesla or whatever circuit breaker close to where the power comes in from that 200 amp breaker. That creates less heat in the box makes it more efficient and all that energy then will flow into the car rather than go up in heat inside of this box. And before you try to drill or make holes or go through it, you got to find out where the studs are. So what I try to do is I try to use the knock test. So if you can listen here, it sounds hollow. Oh, it's pretty solid right there. Hollow. Get this wire out of the way. Pretty solid. Hollow. So that's your first indication that there's a stud behind it. So let's look down here. Yes, look at that. We've got nails. Nice and solid right here. So you do not want to try to put a conduit through this wall to the wall connector from the inside and not know where the studs are. So here is the version 3 Tesla wall connector. Brand new in the box. We will cut the tape. I guess this is officially an unboxing, but I'm sure that most of you have seen it. Bang. Okay, so here we are. So let's get this out and we'll play a little bit on the wall to see exactly where it's going to go. Then we'll mark its position and drill from the outside inside. So we're gonna do a fit test now. And I'm gonna grab the wall connector. And the reason I'm doing this fit test is right here, if you notice, they've got this ridge. It comes out a half inch-ish. And uh, I wanna make sure that when the cord goes on the top, if I was to mount it here, now I've got just a small space, which may interfere with pulling the cord out. So if I mount it a little higher here, closer to a eh, half inch or so from here, shouldn't interfere. There's places for screws here on the top where you actually secure it. If I mount it within a half an inch, now I've got more room for the cord to go here. So that's what I've determined. I'm going to mount it up high. So let's get the cutout and see what that looks like. So here's the cutout. And again, I believe the, you can see by the screws here where this stud was, we're gonna wanna be between here and here, 16 inches. Typically studs are on 16 inches. We're gonna wanna have, be somewhere in the middle-ish. And I know that from our fit test, I think I want like the, the wall connector here. So and we can eyeball it. So if that's there and this is here, I'm eyeballing this and I'm thinking something like right in there. I'll just tack that on with the screw. So this is the 1450 box and this box will be mounted over here, probably something like that. And you ask, well, why do you need both? Well, this house right here is going to be an Airbnb. And I do not know what the 
customer is going to require. Maybe they have a Leaf or some other kind of car, a uh, Z, uh, an e-tron or something of that nature, and they need the 1450. Or if you have a Tesla, you use the wall connector. So I'm going to put both on. So we're going to do the knock test again. We know from this nail and these nails that studs here, I'm looking for a fire break that may run left to right. So let's check. Nope, pretty hollow. I think we're pretty assured that we can go where we want to with the wall connector outside. This is the wall connector. As you can see, there's a set of screws here and a set of screws here, and that actually fixed this rear plate. And I'm guessing that this allows me to pull this out, and it does. Some pretty smart engineers there. It's kind of a handle. Of course, you won't need it for long. Comes with uh, some hardware. Uh, looks like some mounting screws and some other stuff here. It's kind of cool. Make sure that doesn't blow away. So it comes with hardware. It even comes with a uh, unibit for an angled connection for the screws that actually screw on here. So that's good. So this is the wall plate, and you can see that there's two accesses, one on one side, one on the other. I'm not sure we're going to really uh, care which one, but I favor this one because it's between the stud and the other stud on the other side. You'll notice that the back of the cover here is actually uh, waterproof. And they only want you to drill the holes you want here with a drill so that you have the minimum amount of penetrations to keep the moisture out of the inside of this. So I've decided that I'm going to drill here in the left side. So before you drill anything like this, it's really important to try to fit it and make sure that it works correctly. So what I'm gonna do now is put a nut in here, centered up on where it should go. And as you can see, it actually fits in there fine. There's enough clearance to actually rotate the nut, and I think we'll be fine if I drill this out. All right, so let's give it a whirl here. I'm gonna take it easy. This is a step bit. A step bit is actually really great for drilling sheet metal and the like. And don't want to walk it the wrong way. As you can see, it's walked a little that way. So I'm gonna walk it back. Should probably drill this in a drill press. Yeah, it's pretty good about there. Take my time. Now with a step bit, don't be in a hurry. As you can see, it cuts very nice. It's just plastic. Don't be pushing it like crazy. You want to fit it to make sure that you're not over drilled it. My feeler says that's probably about right. Let's check. Oh, not quite. The front's through, but not the threads. I got to go to the next notch. Now at this point, you got to take it very easy. There, I'm down one more. Let's see how that fits. Eh, close. Probably screw that in there. I think what I'm going to do, since this is a thick piece of material, I'm going to drill from the other side, but ever so slightly. Just take that ridge off, and let's see what we got. Oh, almost. Getting close here now. Just take it easy. I don't really want to, unless I have to go the whole way, there it is, right through, all the way to the last, and perfect fit. Got enough room for us to put the nut on and rotate that down so that it's on there pro properly. So this is done now, and other than the holes I got to drill for the mounting, no problem. We're good to go. So let's move on to the next step here. I'm going to remove the connector here. And we're going to go test it on the wall. Figure out which one of these holes we're going to need to drill that next. 
All right, so let's put it on the wall and see what we got. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the wall. I'm gonna mark the wall here. I'm gonna hold this where it was, ditch the level. Okay, we've got all the marks. They're on the wall. So let's move to the next step. So our next step is we need to drill the hole through the wall that will allow our conduit to flow. So let's drill this baby. Whoa. As you can see, it's a very aggressive bit. You gotta hold the darn thing. All right. There we are, we're into the wall now. All right, we are in the inside of the garage and you can see where I came through here in the OSB, you can see the small hole. Here we are. Okay, hole made. Okay, even I make mistakes. As you might imagine, that one and a half inch drill was just fine for the conduit end, but not the connector end. And what this is going to do is hold this drill guide on so it's not going to move now. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to orbit it slightly. All right. There we go. There we go. And we cut that out. All right. Now it'll be fine. Now we got to do the same thing on the inside. And I'm going to start the top one here first, just to make it enough to hold the plate. So we'll go in, take it easy. Make sure we're straight. And we are, so I'm going to back it out now, not going all the way through, but it'll hold the plate for us. I'm going to attach this now. You can see the stainless screw special driver. We'll just take it real easy. Go into the same hole that I started here. Okay, now we'll grab the second screw and run that in the hole. As I compress this down, the rubber behind it will seal the hole like that. You can see it spread out. So you don't want to go any more than that because you just damage the rubber. This is on there. Now I've got this other hole which I'm going to put one more screw in. If we're lucky, it's liquid. Hey, look at that. Yeah, it works out okay. So you take a little of this glue and its job is to melt the plastic. So you put some on the inside, you put some on the outside, and you don't dilly-dally at this point. You stick it on and rotate it all the way till it goes down and now it's done. It'll set and that won't come out of there. Okay, now with this glued on here, we gotta do some measurements. So I'm gonna stick it right in this hole and it's gonna come out in that wall connector. And I'm gonna draw the wall right on the conduit here. This is the depth of the wall. So in reality, what I need to do now, this wall needs to be out that much, okay? I'm gonna assume that if this comes even and I need that even, I am going to cut this here. I glued this on and if we look close, you can see my little mark right there. This is on. So let's see what this looks like when I plug it in. All the way in. And look at that. One sixteenth sticking out of the wall. I think we're in good shape. This will be the conduit coming from the wall connector. I'm going to start it here and then once I get through I'll do it from the opposite side. Yeah, it makes this cute little dimple because I kind of warmed it up. So we'll go in uh, from this side now. I'm not holding this kind of thing. So it's going to Okay, the hole's made. Look at that step that makes a nice hole. Okay, another hole's drilled. And then
And we've got one more hole to drill over here, which is going to take us to this big giant 1450. Okay, hole drilled. Here is the box. There is my hole. And we're going to stick that right on there. As you can see, it sits right there perfect. Doesn't move, doesn't rattle. This one inch conduit has that number six Romex in it. Goes down the wall and comes down to our box where all of the wiring goes. We will have a three-way connector inside there to hook up all of that in parallel. This runs over to the 1450 box on the outside of the house. Out here, of course, on the left, we have the Tesla version three wall connector. That's just the base. And we're gonna hook up this wiring here now. Over on the right side is a waterproof 1450 50 amp outlet. That will be in parallel with the power to the wall connector. Most cars have an internal or a mobile connector they can hook to 240. In this case, we'll provide the 50 amp 1450 NEMA connector for those people that are not Tesla. It is time to hook up the wall connector on the outside. So here's our wire. I'll go ahead and strip the jacket now. We have uh, the number six and another number six and a number 12. So what we're gonna do, we'll stick that through the conduit since it's all insulated anyway. We'll prep up the ends here and then dress them up and we can stick them in. Okay, there we go. So let's put our black in there now. I'll go ahead and tighten up the screw here now. And uh, I will get the torque wrench out. And last but not least, we'll grab our number 12 ground. Now, of course, this is a pretty large hole, so you want to make sure that uh, Allen hits that ground right in the middle. Does that look pretty or what? All right, so I'm going to grab a little tie wrap, maybe. And I'm ready to put a tie wrap on here. Just like that. Flush so it doesn't cut you. And there it is. There is the base plate for the wall connector wired up. Just that easy. And take a picture of the connections. If you ever question whether you did it right, you have photographic evidence. All right, I think we're ready to go here. So let's work on the 1450 next. Here's the 1450 box. It's a little tighter. The connections go into the connector here and they come in from the bottom because this connector will then go this way. Okay, so what I try to do is uh, dress up stuff so it looks nice and then uh, stick this guy in here, tighten it up nice and tight. Not that tight, Dave. Okay, good. Ground's on, dressed up. Okay, so this plug is gonna go this way. This is gonna be inserted into the box this way and then screwed into place, okay? So it would make sense now that we take these guys and you can't have them too long because they have to bend up and in the bottom of the connector. So we'll pre-bend them here, get an idea where they're actually gonna go. So if I look at this, which is gonna go about here, holes lined up, they're gonna come up to about here. Now they don't go through the other side, so I'm guessing to have a little bit of latitude because this will go down. I'm gonna cut just a little long. I think I'm gonna cut it about here. All right. So here we go. I'm going to grab a little shorter screwdriver. This is my Klein 11 and one These are really handy to have, let me tell you. Remember how we dressed it? 
This is going to bend that way. This one is going to bend this way. So what I'm going to try to do now is stick them in the appropriate... Sometimes this is a pain. Okay, just snugged. So let's see how it's going to actually go up in there. Yeah, I think it'll go fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make these permanent. This is a big, giant, heavy-duty one. This one uh, is used for setting this stuff. All right. We'll just check the ground is good. Okay, I think we're ready. And now comes the fun part. Let's see if what we did is worth it. Stuff is stiff. Oof. That side's in. This side is in. All right. We'll dress this up a little bit underneath. We know that it'll flow right. Push this in and down slightly and put the screw in. All right, let's get the screw I saved. Okay, and just snug it up. Okay, that's it. Let's go take a look inside and set that up now. It is time to prep the wires. So one last time I'm going to run over. This is the supply line coming from the circuit breaker. I'm going to run over here real quick. Confirm the circuit breaker is off. I am the only one here. And if you ever work on anything like this and you have a circuit breaker box and you shut off a circuit breaker, one of the things you want to do is shut the door on the circuit breaker box and put a big giant note there and say, do not enter. Reason you do that? Obviously you don't want somebody in the family to come by, see it open and say, oh, that breaker's open, let me shut it. You'll uh, not like that. Okay, same procedure we did outside. And here is our supply lines. All right, so what do we see here? We see three of the same color wires we have three grounds, and so the object here is, is that the power comes in here, and it comes down these wires, and we want to put both the wall connector and the 1450 box in parallel. So how do you do that? What do you do? Twist all these wires together? Nope. They got these nifty little connectors, but you slide your wire in here, and at the top, you have a uh, hex wrench, you tighten it down, and that allows you to bond multiple wires. Now the way these uh, type connectors work is they are bust, which means all three connectors are the same. So since everything is in parallel by threes, I'm going to put this down here, stick each one of the grounds in there, and tighten it up. Get the white ones been out of the way temporarily. Now our job here is to take these black ones and all connect them up. See how that goes? It's relatively pretty looking. I know, it sounds weird. Ugh. Stuff's hard to bend. So I'm going to bend it out of the way, but we're going to move it over here because remember, we got another one of these black things. And so I'm going to put this black thing here, kind of near the end, and then that'll allow me to put a, the white one over here, okay? Goes right up inside and into the conductor. We'll tighten this guy up to a point where it's just snug. Remember, you don't want any loose joints around because of the, uh, a lot of power going through this conductors. It'll create heat and cause you trouble. Put in the little plugs, keep stuff out of the conductors, and so now it's all insulated. Okay, now we do the same thing here with the uh, white. I think we are good. All right, I'm gonna bend this back like we do. Now, isn't that pretty? All right, now it's uh, checkout time. I'm gonna have to get the meter and uh, give it a whirl. It's smoke test time. So before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look outside and just double check everything. 
and then I'm going to hit the breaker and we'll see what happens. Either we'll get a big giant flash or something. But our meter is telling us that there is no shorts or on each side of uh, the phase here, which is single phase. And I think we're good. So let me uh, walk over to the circuit breaker panel now. And I am throwing the ju juice. Here goes. Great. The circuit breaker closed, did not pop. You didn't hear me die. And of course this can kill you too, so you've got to be very careful. So I'll put the meter, which is running low on battery. Come on. Okay. So I'm going to go across the 240 here. Okay. Look at that. 245.9 volts. Now if I go to the ground here, what do I get? Half. 123 and 123. Perfect. So I'm going to measure the wall connector here. Across the phases, 246. One to the side to ground, 123. The other side, 123. Now let's take a look at the 1450. I'm going to go across there. 245 across the 240 side from one side to ground, 123, and the other side to ground, 123. All right, I would say that it was successfully wired. Now on the back of the wall connector, again, it's a very cool design. The uh, 240 goes here on these two blades and then on the third blade here. And so this is the ground blade and then the two phases, which are these guys. So we should just be able to plug this directly on. The conductors, just as simple as that. So now I've got the hardware and I've got this funky dunky bit here, which is uh, this way, that way, so you can change the different angles. We'll start this in. Get this this way, that way screwdriver in there. And righty tighty. Okay, snug it up. Snug this guy up. Don't go crazy with it. And this one. Okay, the wall connector is mounted. And I'm going to go throw the circuit breaker. So I'm going to shut my light off so reflection's not going to kill you. There we go. And let's see if we uh, see the green light show up here. So here goes. Turn the breaker on. Okay, didn't blow the breaker. That's a good thing. I can't quite see it yet. You guys can. Hey, look at that. Five green dashes. I have configured the Wi-Fi. You essentially take the charge handle, hold the button down for five seconds, resets the wall connector, the wall connector broadcasts an SSID. It then, uh, under here on this paper, is a bug flying around my ear. Under here is the password for the wall connector is stock. And uh, I entered that, did all of it on my cell phone, and I am uh, programmed now for 60 amps. I'm hooked to the local Wi-Fi here in the building, and I think I'm ready to charge. So let's get this unwound and hook it up to the car. Here's the wall connector. Nice looking. We're going to go ahead and open the button. All right, let's see if she charges. Blue. I heard the wall connector click. Now we're flashing green. Let's go take a look inside of the car. I'll grab my phone here and we can do both of these. Well, it's certainly charging. Should go to 48 amps. Voltage is stable. All right, look at that. 48 amps, 42 miles per hour. Wall connector's doing its job.
Let's take a look at the wall connector now. What's really cool on the wall connectors, you can see on the LEDs, it simulates a flow of electricity down into the wire that's hooked to the car. So if you're new to Tesla, this little container here comes with every car. It's got some Velcro on the back and doesn't want to slide around. And inside is a whole bunch of good stuff. This is what's called the mobile connector. The mobile connector comes with an adapter. This particular adapter converts the Tesla connector to a J1772. These you'll find a lot in uh, parking lot chargers at stores and things like that. It's good for about 30 amps. I'll just set that here. Inside, you'll have a couple of different adapters. The normal wall connector that comes with it is a, a regular 120 volt USA plug. If you're in Europe, you'll probably get a Shuku here, and then it has a, another plug that plugs into the body of the wall connector. I bought extra a 1450 adapter, the one plugs right into here, and of course it plugs right here in the wall connector as well. So I'm going to set the 110 volt one or 120 volt one down with the box, careful not to damage anything. And here's what we have the wall connector. It has a familiar plug here on the end that goes into the car side. This one happens to be silver, where the new wall connector is black. Same connector. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and install the 1450. It's simple. It plugs right into the wall connector. So I'm installed the 1450. It plugs directly into the mobile connector. And the mobile connector now will go into the NEMA right here. Now remember, when you plug it in, don't be putting your hands around it. You'll kill yourself. Okay, so let's unwind this carefully. You don't want to let the charge handle get hit onto the ground. It'll damage it. Try to unwind this in kind of a, some kind of an order or not. If you've ever gone fishing on a party boat, you end up with a sewing circle. Okay, here we are. Let's go see if it charges the car. Okay, just like the wall connector, the mobile connector is same plug, and you push the little button right here on top, and it opens the charge hatch. You see we're white. I'm going to plug it in. It'll be blue. And then it'll turn green, which means it's charging. And now we got a good charge. Now the mobile connector is limited to 32 amps, where the wall connector will charge at 48 amps. This is important. If you install a mobile connector at the house, you'll probably end up charging about half as fast as a wall connector. So let's take a look here in the car. Get my hand out of the way, and uh, 32 amps, just like we said. Now notice it's 28 miles per hour, where the other one was 43 miles per hour, nearly double. But it does prove that our 1450 is connected and working, and it's looking good. So on your mobile connector, you'll notice when it's hooked up, it has this great little light show here. And just like on the wall connector, the LEDs indicate that power is flowing towards the vehicle. Yeah, my mobile connector is filthy. If you watched my video up in Wyoming, you'll know why. Good thing is it's waterproof, so I'm not worried about it. Power is flowing from the 1450 socket. So I think our install worked out pretty well. One last thing, if you're new to Tesla, you'll notice with Tesla the charge handle is locked in here for a lot of reasons. But the most important reason is, is you do not want to disconnect a live circuit. 
So with power going into the car, if I would pull this, the high voltage here would arc the connectors and eventually damage things. So it won't let you. It actually locks the connector. So you have to press that little button on top, and if you listen, get down here, listen. You hear that? That's where it unlocks, and now I can pull it out safely. It also keeps the connectors from being live, and of course the car shuts its charge hatch. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was quite detailed. One thing you take away from it is that the wall connector charges nearly twice as fast as the mobile connector. You're not taking it in and out of the car, and besides, the mobile connector is supposed to be in your car in the case you need to charge the car at a non-supercharger location like your friend's house. It really should stay in the car if you can. Another thing is that this is an electrical project, and if you're not skilled or an electrician, do not attempt it. You get across the wrong thing, you'll be killed deader than a hammer. Don't want that. And if you'd like to buy yourself a Tesla, and who wouldn't, the referral link shown here at the bottom of the screen will get you a thousand miles of free supercharging. This is an absolute free thing to you. Follow the link, order your car, and you will enjoy a thousand miles of free supercharging. Thank you for watching. I'll look for you again and take care.